In this video, I'll share two bad experiences I've had as an agency owner and what I've learned from them to help you avoid losing tens of thousands of dollars, waste valuable days and weekends, and see client business mysteriously vanish into the ether. These are things I wish I knew before launching my agency. Alas, I had to learn the hard way. But the silver lining is that by sharing this with you, you'll learn how to spot the signs early and avoid the same problems before it's too late. Before I get into it, you're probably wondering, well, Vish, what happened? <sighs> okay, long story short. So a while ago, I finally managed to convert an opportunity I had been prospecting for a very long time. It's a major global brand. Now to land a global brand takes a lot of luck, a lot of patience and a lot of conversations as some of you might know. Now, luckily or unluckily for me, I had one very strong ally from that organization, my inside guy, the person I built a strong relationship with over donuts and coffee after reaching out to him on social media. Let's just call him Gary. Now, Gary and I got along really well and he felt I had really good skills to help that brand out with their email marketing, SEO and more. Rather than waiting for a whole bunch of convoluted corporate approvals to sign my agency on as a supplier and onboard me, Gary decided his team would pay for my work and they would charge it back to the company somehow. Now, while it sucks to not have had some type of a payment arrangement set up, I thought it was all fine because I'd rather just get this client in the bag and impress them and there was a, a lot of things that were in writing. But that was my first misstep. So they started to give me work. Gary was super impressed with my first project deliverable and the first invoice was actually paid out pretty quickly. Everything seemed fine. Now, even though there was no formal agreement or contract in place, I still kept getting more and more projects and I spent my weekends perfecting my deliverables and I even subcontracted some of the work out so it looked ultra polished. Now, pretty quickly, the client had a running tab of over $6,000 and I was looking forward to my big payday. Now, everything seemed like a dream. But, as they do, dreams sometimes do come crashing down. Gary was suddenly laid off, so my inside guy who gave me all this work and was paying my invoices lost his job and I started to sweat. What should I do? So I tried different things. I managed to get a hold of the client's payments team. Now they said they've got no record of me actually being set up as an official supplier. In order to have become an official supplier, I needed to have gone through a competitive procurement process against other suppliers. And one of their key criteria is size. So they basically don't work with small agencies. So I'm kind of feeling screwed here. I've got $6,500 of invoices owed. I've had to pay my contractor out of my savings. And my client told me to blame Gary for trying to circumvent company processes and that I should have known better. Yes, really, I'm not going to get reimbursed for this. Now, when other entrepreneurs tell you that running a business can be tough and brutal, they're not lying. So as I reflect on this, what are the lessons that we all can learn? Now, I'm going to go through a few, but I'd love for you to also tack onto what I'm saying in the comments below. And also, I lost a fair bit of money in this ordeal, so please help me lift my mood by hitting like, subscribing and clicking on that notification bell. Okay, so here are what I think are the lessons. Now, number one. I didn't have any common sense to demand that before starting work, there should have been some type of a formal agreement or legal contract in place. I should have demanded some type of onboarding. And number two, this is something I've changed my tune on after this experience, and that is the concept of charging upfront payments or asking for deposits before work commences. This is something that I used to get really, really worked up about because I've seen uh, I've got a very traditional mentality and don't believe in charging for work until it's completed, the client is happy, uh, but that's all changed, of course, until I had this situation happen to me. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some nuances to that. I'm a massive advocate for recurring billing where, you where you're selling products that are highly automated, like reputation management and chatbots. That stuff just takes care of itself month by month. But for big projects like copywriting or full-scale automations that you're doing, um, I always feel it's better to send an invoice after the work was completed and the client is happy. So when I saw all these other influencers and agencies demand 50% upfront uh, to do work, I kind of got a little peeved. But I take that all back and I understand why, because you do have to protect yourself as an agency. 
Okay, so moving on, the second mistake I want to touch on is not forming good relationships with multiple stakeholders with a client. So there's another client I have, a very high value partner, but I've lost a fair bit of business with them. Like me, many of you, when you form relationships with prospects and clients, you tend to have that one primary contact from that business. It could be the founder, it could be the head of marketing, head of sales, whoever it is. You've got the ear of that person, you love working with them, and they're really receptive to new ideas, products, and upsells that you may have. But then as time goes by, things change. People move on, that founder delegates responsibilities to their chief operating officer, the head of marketing quits, etc. And then what do you do? Do you know other people at that organization? Do you have their contact details? And that's where I messed up. I never got other stakeholders involved when I had meetings with this client or in the process of uh, tr teaching them how to use the marketing tools that I was providing them. So when my primary contact left, business with that client stagnated. I then had to work really, really hard to reestablish that relationship to the point where I had to drop into their office uninvited multiple times to let them know, hello, I'm the agency who works for you. I handle your social media and SEO. We need to talk about resuming your campaigns. Now, eventually everything worked out, but the lost revenue opportunities and the time sink in reestablishing that relationship kind of felt unnecessary. So to summarize what you can learn. Number one, make sure you get formal agreements and recurring billing in place before starting work with a major client, especially a major one. You might be really tempted to get them in the bag and show off that you work with this really amazing global brand in your portfolio, but the risk isn't worth it if you've got nothing in writing. And so you also want to consider the tactic of charging upfront. Number two, Form multiple relationships with key stakeholders at the businesses you work with. This way, if there's a change in responsibilities or someone leaves, you hopefully have solid continuity beyond your primary contact. That's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd really love your thoughts on the mistakes and tips I've given. And please let me know in the comments if you have any of your own mistakes and lessons to add. It will all help us grow together as a community. And please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and click that notification bell. It helps our channel out a lot. I wish you every success. See you next time.